It is that time of the week again. That's right, it's time for the Boruto review. This is the uh, second episode, as you can probably see from the description and the thumbnail and other things. Uh, the name of the second episode is The Hokage Sun! Exclamation mark. Um, so far, both episodes have had exclamation marks. Fun fact. Um, don't think that really adds anything. Anyway, let's jump straight into it. Um, as of the first episode, I'm just going to flash up some stills that I took from the, uh, you know, screenshots from the episode. Not going to put a video in the background because I imagine that probably, you know, that's that's probably uh, not very, you know, that's not very accepted. I'm sure it would be flagged and stuff. So anyway, let's jump straight in. So uh, this episode uh, begins two weeks after the first episode, which is Boruto's first day at the Ninja Academy. Uh, because obviously we saw at the la uh, end of the last episode, he plowed a train into the Seventh Hokage, Naruto's uh, stone face, and so he was suspended for two weeks. So, you know, we see him enter, um, and, you know, as he's walking through the thing, we get a brief shot of Inojin, which is Ino and Sai's uh, son. I thought it was a daughter uh, um, originally. But definitely a son, he's got, you know, a male voice and stuff, and he's just sketching in his book like his dad, which is quite nice to see. Um, so, uh, we jump straight ahead to the intro then. Basically, nothing really of uh, note happens. So, I thought also I'd focus a little bit on the intro today, just little things I've noticed. So, first off, if anyone is interested, the song is growing on me a little bit. The first time I heard it wasn't wasn't sold, really. It sounded a little generic, but now it's got more of a catchy thing. I like that it was kind of upbeat. It sounds it sounds kind of, well, mid-2000s kind of punk, rocky, pop-punk kind of thing, uh, which, you know, fits the style well. I think it's about new teens and new generation, stuff like that. Anyway, so I found it really cool that it, right at the start of the intro, you see Naruto... Standing on the um, uh, what you call it, the like telegram, telegram, telegraph pole, like that. Um, I'll, much like Kashi did, I think, in one of the first episodes of Naruto, or like his introduction. I may be wrong. I could be completely wrong. Could have been Sasuke that did that. Wasn't Naruto though, because it's a cool pose, and Naruto doesn't do stuff like that. So anyway, uh, a little bit further on, and these are really brief flashes, so I have to. Uh, you know, screenshot, make sure I got the exact frame there. But we do see, I noticed in the intro, uh, Inojin flying on a red bird thing, which implies that not only is he a sketcher like his dad, but he can also use um, oh, the secret scroll technique thing, I think. So that's cool. But obviously he's mixed it with Ino's thing. Or, well, I guess he's got his own, uh, his own version, because obviously Sai drew... In uh, just black ink, all of his things are black, but you know, Jin's is red, that's pretty cool. And then we also see a uh, nice little touch I thought is that Denki uses computers or he uses his laptop because everyone's everyone in the intro is showing off their combat ability, but Denki seems to just be using computers, which is fine because obviously his father owns the tech company. And as we know from the flash forward at the start of the first episode, tech clearly takes off, so maybe Denki is partly responsible for that. Some people have been asking if the mysterious man at the uh, start of the first episode is actually Denki when he's older. He could be. I, I I can see that as a possibility. I'm not going to rule it out. You know, he, well, he won't have a secret name, but he could change his name or something uh, to disassociate himself from his dad or something like that. Anyway. Um, right, so, and then at the end of the intro as well, we get a nice little lineup, uh, which is pretty cool. I thought, just showing the older generation all standing uh, in two lines. So, uh, you know, we see Kakashi, Sakura. Right, so I didn't know this, but the guy with the weird visor thing, Ishino, uh, as we see later on, I didn't get the screenshot of someone talking to him, but that is Shino. Then we see Shikamaru, obviously. Uh, Naruto, we see Sai. Uh, that is Konohamaru with the blue scarf, which is pretty cool. Um, and then, I presume that's Choji. I think that's Choji. That kind of looks like him. He's balding and stuff, but it fits, you know, it fits his hair. And he's rather large and stuff. And, of course, we see Rock Lee at 
the end. So, you know, that that's just um, things I noticed in the intro. I thought they would be worth bringing up. Um, anyway, so we start the episode back up. Uh, and, you know, he's in class. A few people murmur um, around the room that Boruto, like, he should have been suspended from school or not allowed to attend the Ninja Academy because, you know, he did vandalise a Hokage stone face. Uh, and, you know, other people whisper then, oh, well, this is because of his dad. You know, if, if his dad wasn't Hokage, he'd be expelled or he wouldn't be allowed in. So that's, you know, it's interesting. There's a bit of animosity towards him. The uh, people in school, kind of like Naruto, where, you know, everyone picked on him for not having parents and being a Jinchuriki and things like that. It's kind of a parallel with Boruto here in that it's almost the opposite in that he's made fun of because he's got parents, obviously because his father is most powerful guy in the Leaf Village, but still, it's uh, it's an interesting kind of parallel they've got. Um, certainly, we get a shot here of um, Choji's daughter, Chocho, or Choco, I don't know, in the middle, and I don't know the... Oh, sorry, um, Sir Sarada is to the right, which is Sakura and Sasuke's daughter, who I presume we'll see in the next few episodes, because she is one of Boruto's teammates. Um, but anyway, on the left, we've got the uh the oh god the head of the class uh school rep uh, class representative that's it who i swear to god is just new hinata she's kind of quiet she's concerned about naruto uh Ch i'm gonna call her choco choco does call her out and is like why are you so concerned about Boruto? so i assume she's gonna be the new love interest i can see I can see maybe they're leading up to it to make it predictable, and then they're going to switch and be like, ah, but Sarada is actually interested in him, and then, you know, because obviously Sakura wasn't interested in Naruto, so maybe it'll be interesting to see the Sakura-esque character actually be interested in Boruto. That would be interesting, but I don't know. Or maybe the class representative is just kind of a, a nod to Hinato, the quiet type. Um. Anyway, yeah, so it, then there's a brief um shot of them just kind of um, doing a few trials outside for Shino to record their strengths and weaknesses or whatever, and um, and yeah, so Denki tells Boruto, oh, he, you know, he was second place, and Boruto's like, oh, second, wait, who's first? And then we see a flash of a mysterious name, Iwabe. Will he be important? Uh, well, yes, he will, because the next slide is Iwabe showing up in class, like, a minute later. Um, so he's, well, apparently, I think Denki said something like, oh, he didn't stick around once he finished his lap. He said he didn't want to hang around amateurs. So, as you can tell from the screenshot, Iwabe's a little older. He's been held, I think they said he failed two exams. So he's two years, uh, older than the others. Uh, so yeah, he makes an entrance. He's kind of the, the stereotypical punk bad guy kind of thing. He talks about, a lot about loving th strength and that. Strength is the only value that a ninja should uphold and stuff. He seems to be more focused with traditional ninja stuff. Uh, and, yeah. So, you know, he he lays into Boruto, basically saying that he's riding on his father's coattails, as everyone else has. Uh, and, you know, just... And then he goes on to say that, uh, you know, ten years ago we were at war, but now this village has become soft and complacent and stuff like that. Which is interesting because it is, well, that, that is something noticeable, really, that the, you know, Konoha has definitely become more of a kind of metropolis, the, you know, that wars and conflicts don't seem to be as big a thing anymore and the traditional ninja way seems to kind of be on the way out. So he, it's interesting to see, like, a kid with a really traditional uh, thing. I assume it's because, I don't know, either his upbringing or his parents probably have something to do with you know being more traditionally uh ninja against kind of the way that Konoha is uh developing but anyway so Boruto then stands up to him and challenges him to a fight because of course he does he's Naruto's son so I've I got a few clips here I'm just gonna go quickly through them of the fight um yeah so I found it I, I was pretty cool that they fought in the arena the tuning exams uh take place in from you know the original Naruto series uh that was cool I think they called it the exercise yard or whatever but I think that's the pretty sure that's the tune-in exam things 
So, yeah, uh, throughout the fight, we see that Boruto relies a lot on clones. Uh, obviously, his dad must have taught him clone jutsu is from a young age and wherever. We see that later on, uh, well, in Boruto, the movie anyway, he learns the Rasengan. So, but, you know, it is cool to see that his, um, he's really good with clones and stuff. And he's already pretty good in battle. He's pretty clever. So, yeah, um, Iwabe also, right at the start of the fight, sorry, I meant, forgot to mention that, but he's got, like, a big pole thing, but he puts it on, you know, uh, in the ground at the start and says, I'm not going to use this because it will kill you if I use this. So it implies that's kind of his go-to weapon thing. Um, but, yeah, so Boruto basically beats him, and then Iwabe gets really angry and decides to use his staff. Um, also, I think they mentioned he's really good at Taiju too. He's, like top in probably not the academy but you know one of the top but yeah so he he uses earth style i think which is pretty cool uh with his staff he like attaches the ground at the end of his staff like a big hammer thing which is you know well that, that's pretty cool um but yeah before he can really use it inojin uh inojin's little bird that we saw in the intro uh i was quite pleased that i took a screenshot and was like oh maybe we'll see this in a couple episodes time but no, it showed up in this one, so uh, well done me from the past for not really predicting anything, just it, it was a coincidence. But yeah, uh, Inojin saves him by like flying his eagle in, grabbing the pole and stuff. Uh, and it kind of just shows that he's warming to Boruto, because at the start of the episode, um, Inojin, much like Sai, had, um, was the kind of guy, well, he showed he was the kind of guy to just say was on his mind. He could casually just said, well, yeah, of course, Boruto's, uh, you know, got a lenient thing. His father's the Hokage. And, you know, obviously, everyone was like, whoa, why did you say that? And he's like, oh, did I say that out loud? So, you know, he's he's following in his father's footstep. Um, yeah, it's nice to see him warm to Boruto. And then, so at the end of the episode, he actually sticks up um, for Boruto when some kids are bad-mouthing him, the, you know, saying that he's, again, like the other kids did, that he's just... You know, he, he's um, living off it, the fame of his dad and stuff. But yeah, so, you know, In Inojin seems to be friendly, as does Iwabe, actually. He comes back in a class, and him and Naruto seem pretty friendly. And I think in the intro as well, we see uh, Iwabe running along with Naruto. So, uh, Naruto? Boruto. So, they're going to be friends. Uh, so, also, then, we've got... So, this is the first time we see the ending... Uh, ending video thing. Um, so obviously it flashes up with everyone's names. What I did think was interesting, um, obviously I've mentioned this, but yeah, Choji's kid is called Choco or Chocho, which is interesting. Of course, Choji would name his daughter after chocolate. And then the last one uh, is, I assume it's Rock Lee's kid. Or maybe like 10, 10, well, maybe 10, 10 and Rock Lee got together. I do not know. I don't I don't think it's been explained yet. Maybe I've missed something obvious though. But either way, this kid is called Metal Lee. I thought for a while it may have been Metai Lee, but there's obviously like a line. So yeah, Metal Lee. Interesting. Interesting name there. Um pretty pretty metal. And then it ends with the preview for next week is I can't remember the name of the title, but uh, it's about Metal Lee. Actually, which is pretty interesting. And I gotta say, Metal Lee sounds a little bit crazy. Like his voice cracks and stuff. He sounds a bit um, like Lemon Grab from Adventure Time. Uh, obviously, not quite on the same level, but that was really interesting. So, yeah, that about wraps up episode two. Uh, in terms of thoughts, I enjoyed it. I, well, um, as I think I said in the first episode, part of the reason I'm watching Boruto is because I want to see the kids of. You know the ninja uh, ninjas from Naruto and Naruto Shippuden. So th this was really cool, just seeing more of um, you know and Sai's kid, a little bit of Choji's daughter. Um, I can't remember the name of the lady that he had um, that you know he either married or got together with or ever. But so I'm just well, I'll just refer to her as Choko because that is her name. But yeah, uh, she's pretty cool. She seems kind of aloof and sarcastic and stuff. I, I quite like her. Uh, you know, Jin's cool. Um, Sh Shikadai, I think, is Shikamaru and Tamari's kid. 
uh, he's he's a friend of Boruto's, which is nice to see. And yeah, it's just kind of cool to see the rest of the people. There is also a kid, I didn't get a screenshot of this, and I kind of uh, regret it now, but I don't even know where I'd have to look, and I don't really want to watch the whole episode again just to find it. But um, a few shots, there was a kid in the background who had his face covered, like Kakashi. So I am wondering, did Kakashi end up with someone? I mean, he is a lot older, but he's not too old to have kids, I suppose. I'm just not sure who he'd end up with. Um, yeah, well, anyway, sorry, I'm <laughs> I'm just sort of trying to uh, figure that out in my mind, but that doesn't really translate well into audio. Thank you very much for watching this. I will uh, do next episode next week, on hopefully on Wednesday night, or I guess we're in America, Wednesday afternoon, doesn't matter. Uh, so I'll try and get it out the same day that the episode airs. If you do enjoy this, um, you know, if you want to give a like, that would be cool. If you want to subscribe, that would be even cooler. Do feel free to comment. And if you do want to get involved with this, if you do feel that you'd like to talk to it, uh, talk to me about it, or you know, just join into a little discussion podcast kind of thing, get in touch because um, I'd love to discuss Boruto with someone. Uh, you know, obviously there's no need to do that. You can just come back every week and listen to my episodes. Please come back every week because that's the only thing that validates me in life. It doesn't, actually. Uh, well, no, it does. It. I don't know how to end this episode now. I guess I'll just end it. <laughs>